If you so happen to work hard, work long hours, be dedicated, and the outcome wasn't exactly in your favor, do not fret, do not give up, do not convince yourself that you can't get in, that you're not good enough, because guess what? It's people getting in with 498s, it's people getting in with 505s. What's going on, Future Docs in the building? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. I don't know why I have this water bottle just chilling right here, but you know, you gotta stay hydrated, okay? Good skin, get the, the fluids flowing in the body, okay? It's good to have you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you do not wanna miss your dose, okay? Of some medicine, mindfulness, and melanin, okay? Because we, we lit over here. So join the wave, join the wave of greatness, join the community. Today we're talking about how to get into medical school with a low MCAT score. And it's just like, sis, well, how do you even know? Well, <laughs> I I got a low MCAT score <laughs> like twice. <laughs> let me just give y'all let me just give y'all the deets, okay? Because y'all been asking me what was your MCAT scores? Blah, blah, blah. And guess I say scores, cause guess what? I took it twice, okay? <laughs> so just to get this, just to clear the air, your girl got a five hundred the first time. Yeah, yeah. I I know, I know. It's a struggle, and I got a five hundred five the second time. So first thing, GPA. My GPA was a 378. And let me tell you, was my MCAT reflective of that GPA? No, but I feel like that is why, that's kind of what helps me. It's just like, okay, M MCAT, eh, but the GPA is cool. And schools do pay attention to your, um, the trends in your, in your GPA. Like my sophomore year, I got a 4.0 both semesters. So that's that's a good trend. Physics, I gotta be the first time. Physics two, I gotta A, I don't know how. <laughs> By the grace of God, cause guess what? God is dope, <laughs> okay. You know, organic chemistry, first time gotta B, second time gotta A. So it's like, you see, they see the improvement as well. So I think that could have gave me some more leverage. Another thing, community service. I can't give you an exact number of how many hours, but it's really you explaining the impact of that community service. Not necessarily, oh, I did 5,000 hours of community service, but what did you gain from that? Like, what impact did that have on you, okay? And you gotta learn how to explain that because a lot of med students mess up. Like, they can have the perfect MCAT, the perfect GPA, but if they can't articulate why they wanna be a doctor or what they gain from other experiences and things like that, admissions committees are gonna be like, mm, I feel like you're just checking off boxes and you know we don't want to just check off boxes we want to fill up the entire box we want to have the box overflowing with greatness have great outstanding letters of recommendation okay build relationships with your professor if you enjoy a class have that professor know you enjoy the class and show through your grades and your attendance and behavior that that class you love this class okay and go to their office hours and even if you don't have a question or even if you're not struggling in the class just be like i just wanted to pop in just to let you know that i really enjoy your class and i'm passionate about the da, da da like you can even have like a little one-on-one -on -one session a little heart to heart okay talk about your goals and stuff because professors they like to see if they have an impact on students okay especially in a positive way Okay, so make sure you maintain at least like three or four good relationships with your professors because you're going to need them letters of rec and them letters of rec can make or break you believe it or not and you can't read them so you just got to trust them you got to lay it out this is what I need this is what I want and the rest is up to them so I feel like my letters of recommendation definitely helped me along the way personal statement a lot of us put so much pressure on our GPA and our MCAT and I get it but those are not those two scores are not going to solely determine whether you get into medical school or not. You know, it's a holistic view of the applicant. And I need you to know that your personal statement has weight, significant weight. And I'm speaking from experience. A 500 and a 505. Yikes. But we can tell that she's passionate. We could tell that she's striving. She she faced adversity, overcame it. So I think I can trust her with these four years, okay? And your personal statement, 
it has to be personal <laughs> like you think that's common sense right but when we start writing we think that it has to be perfect it has to sound like this it has to look like my neighbors who got into medical school like no it has to be personal tell a story explain what you learned from that story how it impacted your outlook on medicine how can you use that story to or use what you gain from that story to help you as you go into medical school and you become a physician and you treat your patients like have the audience connect to you you can't just say oh being a doctor is x y and z you have to have all of these qualities and blah blah blah, blah and i feel like i display those qualities that's not that's not a personal statement it's not. To be honest, nowhere in my personal statement did I say a physician needs to have these qualities or these qualities define a good physician and I feel like I have them. Not saying that you can't, but that should not be the bulk of your personal statement, okay? Like, just, and be honest, be vulnerable and just explain why, like, if it was a situation you had to overcome, how did you do it? Because admissions committees, yes, they want to see that you endured maybe a rough patch or maybe you excelled in school and did all these great things but how did that impact you i did all of this okay so what and your point be realistic with yourself when you are choosing schools to send your primary application to please be realistic please give yourself a little bit of room for error and then if you want aim high a few times but for example I applied to 14 schools I applied to nine MD schools and five DO schools okay so that's already showing you the variation in my application now do you have to apply to both no you do not you have by no means do you have to do that not at all but if we look solely at the MD schools I applied to I literally had three like high overachieving you know i'm gonna just take my chances three where it's like you know what i feel like i'm right in the range you know i feel like i can get in these scores match these scores and then i had three schools where to be honest i was just like you know i have a higher gpa i have a higher mcat it's just like a I'm hesitant to say a safe school because there's no such thing as a safe school, but maybe they're not as well known as these other schools. And of course, we have to look at our GPA and our MCAT score and compare it to the average for that school, but that's not going to determine if you're going to get in or not, okay? Just because the average MCAT is like a 510, you can get in with your 505, your 502. If it's a research heavy school and you have like no research, you probably don't want to apply. If it's, um, a great school for primary care but you've explained in your personal statement or whatever that that's not your goal it's something else you know just take that into consideration okay if you have a 3-5 and a 502 I wouldn't recommend that you apply to like all of your schools are Columbia Harvard Stanford Baylor and you don't have any schools that actually the GPA is like in line with yours okay so I don't want to discourage you but just be smart of course you want to go to the school with the best education and I mean just because it's a more well-known school does not mean the education is gonna be that much better than going to another school so make sure your the selections that you make are varied so those are my tips for how to get into medical school with a low MCAT score. If you have any more questions about the MCAT, make sure you watch my videos, okay? We got a little playlist, all right? But thanks for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video.